Hello and welcome to the Health Ranger Report. I'm Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, the co-founder of TalkNetwork.com, the editor of NaturalNews.com, and the creator of uh, the GoodGopher.com search engine and Fetch.News, news aggregation system. And uh, today I'm bringing you a very special report that brings in one of the topics that people are very frequently thinking about, and that's the so-called Law of Attraction. It was, of course, made popular, pop culture, by the movie The Secret, and after that by people like Joe Vital and uh, Abraham Hicks and you know the, all, all these people surrounding this, this idea that you create what you think about. Now, by the way, this isn't new. This has been around for a few thousand years at least, and as long as human history has been recorded, this... This idea has been around. However, in my opinion, and that's what this special report is about, it has been cheapened down and it's being pushed by a lot of people today to promote just sort of wishing to be rich. It's all about material attraction, it seems like, at least on the the popular people talking about it. And by the way, there is a serious flaw with this idea of the law of attraction. And this flaw is the subject of today's special report here on the Health Ranger Report. I'm going to explain what's wrong with it in uh, this report entitled Why the Law of Attraction Fails Without Action. It kind of rhymes there too, right? Why the Law of Attraction Fails Without Action. Now let's, in order to get into this, let's talk about what is the law of attraction? And by the way, I'm not here talking to you in opposition to the work of people like the late Wayne Dyer or in opposition to this idea that the law of attraction is valid. Rather, rather, I'm here to explain what's missing from it and why it fails for so many people. Because let's face it, there are a lot of people who have bought the book, who have watched the movie, who have gone to the lectures and the seminars and they have practiced this this idea of sitting in a room and wishing for things that you want to be true and thinking about what you want and focusing on attracting things in your mind, and they're not getting the results. They're not getting the results. You know, after they spend a session wishing and focusing, they open their eyes, and guess what? The rent is still due. You know, guess what? Uh, Their boyfriend or girlfriend still is breaking up with them. Uh, guess what? Their job still sucks. You know, guess what? Life isn't any better just because you closed your eyes and wished about the things that you wish would happen to you. It doesn't necessarily make them magically appear in reality. And this this word magic, I think, is actually very, very important to understand. Now, the the, the cheap, the watered-down version of the law of attraction supposes that We live in a kind of a magical universe where whatever you think about magically becomes true in your life. That if you think about being wealthy, then you're going to be, wham, you're going to be wealthy. It's going to happen without any real action, without any real effort. And to me, this is a highly flawed theory. But by the way, I'm not a guy who believes in just reductionism and determinism and and all those limited views of the scientific nonsense uh, thinking of that everything is just material parts. I actually, I'm, I'm a believer in intuition. I, I know firsthand that the mind is more than the physical. I know that we are conscious beings. I know that we have free will. I know that we have the ability to make our own decisions and to alter our lives based on the decisions that we are making. I believe in the principle of mind non-locality. In other words, I think that mothers sometimes can feel what their children are experiencing if they're in trouble or if they're joyful, even when those children are many, many miles away. I believe that, that the mind is able to tap into things that are more than just the five or six senses, that there is a layer of information in our universe, a kind of fabric of reality that hasn't yet been quantified or, or, or 
observed and recorded by science, but is there nonetheless, and that this field, and which some people call the uh, a field of intention, like uh, Lynn McTaggart, for example, uh, talks about the, the scientific side of intentionality and has conducted things like the intention experiment. But I believe that this is real. This is very real. And there are others, such as uh, Rupert Sheldrake, author of Morphic Resonance and Science Set Free, The Ten Paths to New Discovery, who talk about the, the morphic fields and morphic resonance, which I believe is a very valid theory as well, a theory that goes beyond the, the, the limited thinking of modern reductionism uh, and scientism that, that describes how fields of information can exist that are interrelated with life and consciousness and the mind. So don't, don't mistake my approach on this law of attraction topic as being someone who is, you know, a traditional, narrow-minded, angry skeptic. You know, there's a lot of angry skeptics out there that don't believe in anything that they can't see under a microscope, and they don't believe in consciousness, and they don't believe in the spirit. In fact, they, they believe themselves that they are nothing but biological robots with no mind and no consciousness, and that they're not even really alive. They're just sort of mechanical, uh, biological machines. That, that's literally what most scientists believe, which, by the way, is a great reason not to believe, not to trust anything that a scientist ever tells you, because they don't even think that they are responsible for their own ideas and thoughts and language. They think that they're just biological machines, uh, deterministic parlor tricks of biology, in essence, who happen to be spouting words, but there's no consciousness behind them. You see, so that, that, that's why you should never listen to, to these hardcore skeptics. Rather, I'm a person who believes and understands and experiences consciousness and who respects the consciousness of all life. You know, I believe that plants are conscious, that animals are conscious. Consciousness is something that, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fabric of, of reality that, you know, like Yoda says, penetrates us and surrounds us. Uh, it is, it is a, a genuine part of the reality that, that we experience. With that said, this law of attraction business has always struck me as very, very surface, uh, very um, materialist-oriented. You know, like the movie The Secret was really promoting symbols of material wealth, like, oh, you can get this car, you can get this jewelry, you can have this mansion, and you can collect this money. Or really just other petty things that people wish for. Oh, I wish I could have a, uh, find a good husband or a good wife or have a good relationship or, or what have you. And so this law of attraction, the way it has entered pop culture, is really, I think, a bastardization or a distortion of what, what the real law of attraction means at its core level. Now, on one hand, you might say, well, that's fine because it has, the popularity of the topic has introduced it to a lot more people. And so now people who never would have thought about this before are suddenly thinking about ideas like, uh, oh, you mean I can, I can change my world by changing my intention, by changing my focus? And you might argue, well, that, that's a healthy thing at some level. You know, it's better to, to encourage people to have conscious control over their focus and encourage them to focus on positive things. So there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, it has really cheapened it down so much that the law of attraction we see in pop culture is to real spirituality as, let's say, Taco Bell is to real Mexican cuisine. You know, there, are, there aren't any Mexicans that come to America and say, hey, let's go to Taco Bell and get some uh, traditional cuisine. No. They think it's junk food. They know it's this, really this Americanized, bastardized, cheapened, watered-down version of Mexican cuisine. Taco Bell is not Mexican food. It is, it is American junk food that is dressed up to appear like Mexican food, right? And the same way, the, the law of attraction in pop culture is not really the law of attraction as it was taught for many, many centuries before and it's not really the essence of what the law of attraction means. It is instead just this watered-down version that says, oh, you can sit in a room 
and you can wish for things that you want. You know, I want a magic ring. Uh, I want a, I want a, I want all this money to show up in my bank account. You know, I want to be able to find a parking spot tomorrow when I park my car. And these are these are things that really don't matter to those who are really into spirituality. So the real the real gurus of the world, believe me, are not watching The Secret. They are not reading Joe Vital. They are not listening to Abraham Hicks. The real gurus of the world have already embraced this idea of focusing on what you wish to create, but they combine it with action. And this is the essence of what I want to teach here, that the law of attraction fails without action. So, action is the key to making this happen. You have to combine the two. Yes, you have to have mental focus. You have to know what you want. You have to know what's important. And you have to make sure that your mind is not easily distracted, let's say, by uh, other, other thoughts, other negativity ideas that you don't want to be part of, of your reality, let's say. But you also have to be able to combine this with real world action to make things happen. So uh, we're going to take a break here shortly in about a minute. And when we come back from that break, I'm going to go into the details of what this really means. Why just sitting in a room and wishing for things doesn't work by itself and how to combine the power of intention with the power of action to really make positive changes in your life over a, a period of time. We're talking about serious lasting lifetime changes here. We're not talking about gimmickry and just wishing for things and waving a magic wand and hoping that they magically appear. Instead, I'm going to share with you information about how to use planning and the power of intention with action together to change your future and shape it into the future that you really want. So stay tuned here. We'll come back on the Health Ranger Report here on the talknetwork.com radio network. And we'll cover that when we come back. Stay tuned. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of the Health Ranger Report. Please support us by visiting our online store at store.naturalnews.com where you can find the world's cleanest laboratory-validated superfoods, nutritional supplements, personal care products, uh, shampoo, uh, chemical-free products, uh, just about everything for your home and body and health that uh, you might want, including supplements for your pets as well. Everything is laboratory-validated in our forensic food lab, and we don't sell something unless it tests clean. I think we're the only online reseller to do this really extensive testing of everything that we sell. If we don't like the lab test results, meaning if it's not really, really clean, including with heavy metals, then we don't sell it, period. We have free shipping on orders over $99 and a satisfaction guarantee on everything that we offer. So check us out now at store.naturalnews.com and thank you for your support. 